I got something to shout about. I'm talking about being adopted into God's family, being transferred from the absolute power of the devil, the law, and the sin into the absolute power of El Shaddai, almighty God. I'm talking about my old life has been wiped out and all of the debts that belong to it have been eradicated from my record. Hallelujah. And if the devil would ever go to God uh, and say, Hardy sinned in 1930, God will look at the records and say, sorry, I don't have no record. The only record I have is 1953. That's when I adopted him and made him my son. Because as far, God will say, devil because as far as I'm concerned he never existed until I adopted him into my family and since I adopted him he is my son and my heir and he is going to enjoy all of my wealth and my benefits and my power forever because no one can cut him out of the inheritance. The Roman law, you could not be cut out once you were made the heir. And once you've been made the heir of God and a child of God, nothing can cut you out. The only way that you won't get your inheritance is if you become a prodigal and leave it but nothing can cut you out. The devil can't cut you out. Demons can't cut you out. The law can't cut you out. Sin can't cut you out unless you let it reign in your mortal body. The only way you won't inherit is if you willfully walk away from it. And I'm not that dumb. How about you? I'm not gonna go back under the power of Satan. I'm going to stay under the power of Almighty God. And God says, I give you my power. Behold, I give you power. I've got power over everything. And now that you're my son, that's part of your inheritance. I give you power over everything. And not only am I not under the power of the devil and sin and the law, I've got power over the devil and sin and everything that pertain to that old life. That's how complete our adoption in the family of God is. The courts of heaven look on us the same as it looks on Jesus, the actual Son of God. You know, in the sense of having a son, Jesus is really only the Father's real son because that's why he's called the only begotten son. And he is the legal heir of Almighty God, the heir of all the things of God. Oh, but by a greater law than the Roman law and a greater ritual than the Roman ritual of adoption, we have been mancipatio, we have been emancipated by the precious price. There had to be a price, and this was the price of the blood of the Son of God. And if 30 pieces of silver could buy them under the Roman covenant, how much more shall the blood of Christ, for you were not redeemed with such covenant up the both things as silver and gold. Doesn't so many scriptures take on a new meaning now? Redeem means bought and purchased. It was a word that meant bought out of the slave market because we were in the slave market of sin. We were a child of sin. Huh? Adam and Eve threw us in the trash can. Adam and Eve discarded us 
and sin and the devil picked us up and crippled us and made us their servants for their gain. How many say amen? And most of the time, those that were picked up and used that way were treated like no mere than, more than mere dogs. And at night, they would chain them and just give them enough to keep them alive. And that's where God found us and said, I want to adopt that child. And the price was agreed upon only the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not 30 pieces of silver. That wouldn't do it. We weren't redeemed with such corruptible things as silver and gold. God put all of the gold and silver, but it wouldn't tip the scale of our sins. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? He put all the silver and all the gold in the scales didn't move. That wasn't the price that couldn't do it. They couldn't purchase us. He put the whole world on it. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And it didn't tip the scale. He put all the angels and cherubims and seraphims and all of the angelic beings and all the wealth of the eternal world and we'll never know it till we get there and that didn't move the scale but finally God found the price he reached up and plucked out the bright in the morning star and the lily of the valley and the son of righteousness he looked to his own right hand and he took Jesus and put him on the scale and that did it my brother and my sister that paid the price And when that happened, the devil had to let us go because that was the price that was set. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And immediately when the blood was shed at Calvary, every son that God knew from the beginning, for in the beginning he foreknew every one of us, and whom he foreknew, he called us. And at Calvary, he justified us and took us into his family as his heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. And no longer does the devil and sin and demons have any power over us for we have a new pa ha, patria potestes almighty God is our new father hallelujah oh give him a good clap offering hallelujah hallelujah And because of that, I am in upon suffering the effects of that, enjoying it. I'm enjoying my new status in God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things, now that means something more than just it used to. Huh? Old things pass away. Hallelujah. That old life of bondage, that old life of sin, that old life of fear. We don't have that spirit of fear of certain judgment anymore. Oh, but we got that new spirit of sonship for the Holy Ghost has been sent as the witness of God to cry out through us, Abba, Father, dear Dad. You see? They had seven witnesses. And if perchance that any of the record of the adoption was lost, then only one witness had to come and witness that he was there and saw the adoption. Well, I got news for you. Nobody can ever destroy the records in heaven. Oh, but we got a more sure word of witness. We got the witness of the Holy Spirit in our heart 
every day saying, have a father, have a father, have a father. You're a son of God. You're adopted in the family. The devil don't have power over you. Sin don't have power over you. Death don't have power over you. God is your new father. Righteousness is your new state. And eternal life is your new destiny. Hallelujah. You are an heir of God. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. And all of the wealth and all of the benefits of Almighty God, your Father, is right now at your disposal. Immediately, when the Father went down, to the clerk of the court of records in Rome and recorded that adoption ceremony witnessed by the seven witnesses immediately, not in the sweet by and by, immediately he had all rights and access to everything that his father possessed, his home, his wealth, his riches, His power, his authority was his at that moment. And at the moment that God adopted us into the family and the recording angel recorded it, at that moment, all of God's power, all of God's riches, all of God's benefits, And everything that pertains to God is immediately child of God at our disposal. That's why Paul could say in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, all things are yours. I I think I'd like to read that. How many would like to read that? You got your Bible, 1 Corinthians Lest somebody think I'm saying my own thoughts. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 21st. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. You know, you need, if you underline your Bible, or red or yellow it or highlight it, highlight it. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cepheus, or the world, hallelujah, or life, everything in life's mind, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Everything is ours. Do you begin to grasp it? It's no need for us. to run around in poverty and have not our needs supplied. No need for us to be fearful. No need for us to be sick. No need for us to be bound. Everything that is God is ours. Is God poor? No, Jesus became poor that we might become Rich, and this would enable it to happen. Everything, everything in this life is ours. Everything in this present, you know, most people are preaching about going to be. You know, most of the Christian world is, uh, they have faith, but they always got the faith in the used to be. God used to. Then we got another group saying, God's going to. God used to supply his people's needs under Moses in the old covenant. Old covenant. God used to heal. And then in the millennial reign, God's going to supply the need. And God's going to heal and God's going to deliver. But what about right now? My Bible said God is the same Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. You can't say God used to 
And you can't say God will. you got to say God is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And we have at our disposal right now at this present time in this present world all of God's riches and God's power. Power to defeat the devil. Power to overcome sin and the flesh and the world and the devil. Power to have all of our needs supplied. Power to be healed and to be delivered. All things are ours right now. Give him a good clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Like I said, I'm not sorry because I'm not sorry. I'm excited. I believe being a Christian is the most exciting vocation on the face of the earth. I believe the gospel is the most exciting book on the face of the earth. I believe living the Christ life the way God's word says we are to live it is the most exciting life on the face of the earth. You know, some people have just enough religion to be miserable. They know what they shouldn't do and they don't have enough power to enjoy what they should have. Oh, but thank God since I found out that God is my patria potastes and sin does not rule over me and the devil can't rule over me and no part of my old life can rule over me. It's been wiped out and I've got a new father and I'm in a new standing beside in the eyes of the law of the courts of heaven and God is my father and I am his heir and all that is his is mine now. Oh, when I have a need, I can come boldly. Now you understand that verse? Come boldly to the throne of grace and say, I don't deserve it, but you adopted me. I don't deserve it, but you made me your son. I don't deserve it, but you made me your heir. And you said that right now, everything you have is at my disposal and you will find mercy and grace to help and leave the presence of your almighty Father with what you have need of and go on your way singing, I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. My, don't the scriptures take a new life. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Nothing of the old life can get me. Huh? On, uh, that's all on that side of the cross. I'm on this side of the cross. And I, that's in the old family. And that old life has passed away. I'm in the new family. I got a new father. I got a new life. I got a new position, I got new benefits, I got a new destiny, and that's heaven and eternal life, if you please. But I don't want to talk about so much as the sweet by and by. I want to know more about the now, now, now that I can have. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit that places you as a son. That's what the Greek word really means, adoption. Makes you take your place as a son. You know, God is waiting for you to take your place as a son. He's already done it legally, transferred you over. It's on record. The Holy Ghost is our witness. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons and we can say abba father but oh we got to take advantage you see i can be the legal heir of the richest man in america and everything is mine right now 
But if I don't go ahead and avail myself to it, I can starve to death and be beat down and be oppressed. And I can walk away from it. Nobody can take it from me. But I can fail to appropriate these blessings. Brother, I'm not. I haven't received the spirit of bondage again, the fear. I'm going to come boldly. And the spirit bears witness with my spirit that right now I am the heir, son of God. How many say amen? amen? And if I'm an heir, I'm a child. And if I'm a child, if we're children of God, then what is the consequence of this? And if heirs, then on one hand, heirs of God, and then on the other hand, joint heirs with Jesus. We're the heirs of God, but we are the equal heirs with Jesus. God had given everything over to his first only begotten son. But then when he adopted us into the family, he gave us an equal share. Amen. I guess the best way for me to illustrate it that helped me and satisfied me of being a joint heir. You see, you can be an heir of somebody, which means they could leave you a dollar. And you'd be an heir. But then he'd leave all the rest a whole lot of money, but you wouldn't be an equal or a joint heir. How many say amen? Well, you see, the Lord didn't make us a dollar heir. Though he has given Jesus everything, he made you and I an equal heir. And I guess the best illustration maybe would be joint bank accounts. How many ever heard of a joint checking account or a bank account? You and your wife can go down to the bank and draw up a joint checking account, which means you both can put in and you both can take out. Usually, the husband puts it all in and the wife draws it all out. And that's literally what happened with us and God. Jesus put it all in because we had nothing to put in and now we can equally draw it out. You see, he became poor by putting everything in the account and he knew we would draw it out. So when we got adopted, the first thing our new father did after he hugged us and kissed us and our new brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, embraced us and welcomed us and the Spirit of God kept crying out through us, have a father. And all the angels applauded was God gave us a checkbook on the account of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. And Jesus has already signed it. This is a two signature account. Takes two signatures to get it. And Jesus has signed every check in the book and there's enough checks to cover everything you'll need forever and he hasn't limited you how many times you can go to the bank God hasn't limited us how many times we can come to him in prayer in fact he said whenever you got a need when whenever you need help come on the banks always open 24 hours a day and the count is limitless. You can't overdraw. And he's given us the checkbook. And all we got to do by faith and believe in what he's done for us and what he has made us, when he adopted us, is fill out what we need and place the second signature on it and come boldly to the throne of grace. That's the bank. God's the custodian of it. It's in trust for us. How many say amen? amen? And when we come and show them the name of Jesus, already endorsing the check, 
Because Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. How many say amen? Amen. When we come, you know, they check your signature. I want to see if it's on roll. As soon as you come with your prayer, the angel checks the records to see if you've been adopted. Hallelujah. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Immediately adoption, God wrote your name in. And when that attendant comes back, says, here, this is a valid signature. Said, what do you want? And how do you want it? You tell them how much money you want, and they usually ask you when it's big, and I believe in asking big, they want to know how you want it. Tens, twenties, hundreds, thousands, millions, skillions. You abide in me. You're adopted in me. And my words abide in you. Then you shall ask. You could fill out the check what you will, and it shall be done. It shall be given to you because you are a joint heir. Don't think in the old mind when you were a discarded, crippled, wretched, beggar, overlorded by the devil and sin and the world and bondage. Hey, that old life has been broken. The power of that patria potastes has been disannulled.